good people, George with virtual staging here. This time we're working with SketchUp and V-Ray and if you're a beginner or simply want to learn how you can insert 3D furniture realistically in a photo with SketchUp, then you are the right place. Alright, let's begin. I have SketchUp 2020 and V-Ray installed and my first step is to load my background photo from the file and import always make sure to pick new match photo. In my case, I have two images. One of them is already photoshopped. And as soon as I'm ready, I'll press OK or import. If you're a beginner and don't know what are those lines, they are called vanishing lines. We will use those lines to match our camera, our virtual camera orientation and origin, which should match the camera from the photo. The yellow rectangular at the bottom or the center of those lines is used for the referencing point, like in this case the corner of my room. But for now I'll leave that referencing point on the side because I don't want to block my vanishing lines otherwise I'll keep struggling to make it. Each set of those dashed lines should point to one direction only. If you mess up this part of the perspective match, your room geometry will be skewed, I guarantee you. It is a good idea to measure the mannequin how tall it is. By doing that, you will know if you are in the correct scale. When I'm ready, I'll take the rectangle tool and make one of the walls. If I check the height of the room, I can see that my model is in the correct scale. The height should be at around 250. Next, I have to conform the geometry to match the room, but before that, my model should be up front of the plane. All of the modeling is very simple push pull and cutting holes. We need a very simple representation of the space. If I check my dimensions, they seemed just about right. Next, I will remove the front plane because I simply don't need it of that part of the camera. And of course, I have to align my mannequin to match the floor. My next move is to make the window openings for my light. In most occasions, it's just uh, making a, a rectangular boxes and push and pull and then deleting the back of the planes. Occasionally, I will project the texture onto the geometry because by doing this, I can approximately see what I'm doing and what I'm cutting. Whoops, in the making of the second window, I've pulled the wrong space uh, face <laughs> and I'll leave this uh, and I can fix it later on. If you watch any of my other videos on this channel, by now you will know I love making spheres and especially I make them to test the light and some of the colors. Well, in this video, this is not an exception. 
And this next step is the very, very important part of the whole virtual staging with SketchUp. Those materials in red are from the mannequin, so we are going to make a new material called wrapper. I've opened the V-Ray material browser and I'm clicking on this small little ball with the plus sign. Then we need a second material, generic one, which will be plugged into the wrapper as a base material. Activate all of the options I show on the screen. Matte, matte for secondary rays, for to in very projection, shadows, effect alpha and alpha contribution to minus one. Then select your room object and apply the wrapper material to it. Right click, apply to selection. Finally, it's time for lighting. At first, I don't need the sun, which comes by default with the scene. Then I'll pick a very plain light and make two lights pointing to the room. Then I'll make them invisible to the camera and increase slightly the direction of the light. My lights are set and now it's time for the next step. And now is the time for you to pay a close attention. First, we're gonna set the output size to match the resolution of our background image. In this case, those are my numbers. Then I'll go to the environment drop down and into the background texture slot, I'll add my background photo and set the texture placement mapping to screen. I'll go back and adjust the values at 50 and you will see why. If it's one, the image seems very dark and all the objects inside are dark as well, hence the higher value. Then I'll go to the GI slot and add the same texture into the bitmap, but this time the mapping should be spherical. Then I'll go back and activate the secondary mat. I'll add the bitmap, but this time should be back to screen again. Now we have three bitmaps. As you can see, the, my image it comes out dark, so I have to increase all the values of the bitmaps. And that's right now. But despite all of the settings, I still don't have my shadows. And here is why. Let me show you something. If I turn off the matte, all of the image comes out dark and the texture is lost. Then I see my polygons as a grayed out. And because of I set my material wrapper correctly, this means my polygons are inverted. I'm going to select the whole room object. I'll press the right click and reverse the polygons to point inside of the room. And guys, don't fall asleep just right now. Now, let me guess. We have shadows, right? Yeah, we have shadows. We do have them. And the rest is history. But there is one little trick I should really do. I have to increase the secondary matte number. Otherwise, everything will be dark. As you can see, if I set this to 50, which actually is matching the background and the GI numbers, it is fine, my sphere is white and I have shadows and everything looks really balanced. What else you can do in order to improve the lighting? Well, you can try and adjust some of the lightings. Increase or decrease your lighting portals and try if you can achieve a deeper and higher shadows and sometimes make sure to not exaggerate those lights. And for those of you who have stayed till the end of this video, here is a little game. By looking at the frame buffer, can you guess what I have not mentioned during the course of the video and why? Let me know down in the comments and don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends. Also, if you are new to this and want to learn more about how to become a pro virtual stager, click the subscribe button. See you in the next video.